G'day fellas and welcome to another casted game spawning in over on the west of the map. It is Zan Mato and he is going to be playing the Chinese, his opponent who spawns over on the eastern side of the map playing under the ID GL. The Viper. He's, uh, he's going to be playing the Chinese as well on the color red. So let's take a look at, at uh, what we're going to be up to this game. Uh, first and foremost, we are playing uh, French Pass. French Pass is considered by many to be a very, very boomy map. And that is primarily because of these bad boys in the middle here, which are the, uh, well, I guess you could say the, the French Pass. But uh, with regard to the way that this game is going to open, we can actually see both players going for different build orders here. So Viper uh, going to be going with six villagers under the town center. Going to be going on sheep. One villager already out to uh, gold. So going for a very early age up. Whereas his opponent uh, is going for a supervised mill on the berries. Now the berries are very close to his town center. He's going to be super duper happy with his spawn there. But uh, when it comes to uh, how this game is going to unfold, typically the way that it begins to work is that players only have two gold mines in on their starting side. Viper's got one here, a further one down here. All the remaining gold mines are in the middle of the map. And so it means players are going to have to fight for the middle of the map. And there's a couple ways that you can go about that. Uh, whether you want to sort of like uh, gain a foothold over here, just putting a, a castle down or something like that, and then beginning to work your way up. Or whether you go and be a bit more aggressive by sort of just castling in over onto your opponent's side and then sort of taking it from behind. So we'll have to see exactly how these players go. Uh, so just staying aboard with Zenmato, he's going to be doing a little bit more of a different build. So seven villagers on food this early, two villagers out on the gold here. Uh, he's not going to have any wood actually for a lumber camp. So he's going to have to be doing some long distance chopping here. We'll check in on Viper and see exactly what he is up to. So you can already see Viper sitting up with three villagers on gold still at this point. And he's actually not pulling them off gold, or at least not at the moment. So we'll have to see if Viper goes for... One of the things that we've been seeing players do, it's actually quite common now, is a quick dynasty. So they just go for a super duper quick dynasty uh, and just start that villager production almost immediately. So we'll have to see if Viper goes for some sort of play like that. Obviously, this is a Chinese mirror and uh, there was recently a, a post by Marine Lord and he actually th said that he thinks Chinese on this map is the best civilization. He said every single time, even on his main account, if he is playing this map... He is playing the Chinese. And that's how strong the Chinese are in the current meta on this map. And take a look at Viper already picking up a lot of sheep out here. Got the triple double for himself. For anybody wondering what the triple double is, on pretty much every single map, there is going to be three sheep that spawn in sets of two. So you have one set of three, and then you have a second set of three. And Viper has picked up all of those sheep. So very, very fortunate for him. Uh, now going to be transitioning over onto stone as well. I'm very curious to see what this build order is coming out to look like. We'll take a look at income per minute so you guys can spot that. I get a lot of requests for income per minute. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it, but I know that there are a lot of people out there who do like it. So uh, very important uh, that I show you guys that so you're aware who is where. Viper now going to be dropping down the Imperial Academy. And one of the things I always know with Viper, he's very good with his Imperial Academy placement. Always thinking about the, the sort of the starting location. Now you can tell that these buildings, all three of them are under the influence of the Imperial Academy because of this little plus sign that has uh, occurred on top of them. That is the reason why. So now I think the question is, what is Viper going to be doing with this gold here? I've got a feeling he's going to be going for a double um, a double dynasty or a, du a double landmark. You know, what? I'm going to call it the double dynasty. I like that. That sounds pretty good. A double dynasty. Uh, it sounds like a, I don't know. It sounds like a KFC burger. What do they have? They have like, is it the double down? Is that what it's called? I just remember there was this burger at KFC that you could get. It had, uh, in instead of the, the fillets, you actually just got like, oh, sorry, instead of the buns, you just got chicken fillets. Uh, the, the chicken fillets, I think, I, I'm pretty sure it was called the Double Down. At least it was in Australia. Uh, but we'll take a, a look over at his opponent, see what he is up to. Zanmato going to be dropping down that Barbican of the Sun on top of his gold vein, uh, guarding the second one as well. Also doing a pretty decent job here of guarding this hunt. So he's going to be able to very easily just wall across here, put in a, a nice little wall in. That way, if there's any units that try and get through here, they're going to have to be redirected around to the Barbican, and the Barbican is going to take absolute care of them. So... Taking a look now at Zanmato, he hasn't uncovered that much of the map, but obviously he knows the gold's towards the middle. That's what he is mainly going to be concerned about. Viper hitting that dynasty now. Now, neither player really looking uh, to go towards that second town center just yet. We've got an archery range that gets dropped down straight away from Zanmato. This is really curious, okay? So this is a very, very boomy map. I have no idea why this is the build order that Zanmato is going for. We're going to have to tune in with him a little bit later. He's got one Imperial official out. We'll check on Viper, see exactly what he is up to. Uh, Viper now going to be getting some sort of upgrade from somewhere. 
Uh, there we go. He's got the wheelbarrow upgrade. Going to be coming in. Also going to be uh, building up resources here to drop down a second town center. You can see he's up to 260 stone at the moment, pulling off those two villages. Going to be bringing them back towards the gold vein. He appreciates that it's going to take him a while to gather up a little bit more uh, for that. But Viper now going to spot out this archery range. He's also going to spot the Imperial official on the archery range, and he's probably going to be scratching his head, thinking, what the heck, he, what the heck is this guy doing? Is... Uh, you got to really be wondering. So the reason why, it typically on this map, why you will not see that sort of play, Viper actually responding in, in or making in response an archery range himself. Um, so the reason why you typically won't see this play is just because of the walking distances players have got. So obviously you can see that he, he's going to have to go all the way up here, all the way around, and then all the way down towards Viper. Viper now, in response, you're going to be putting a wall segment up. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a second wall segment coming in down around uh, he, you know what? He could probably even wall in the whole thing here. But I'm suspecting that with this early push, uh, whether we may see a potential uh, blacksmith getting dropped down uh, with siege engineering looking to come in. It doesn't look like it at this stage. Maybe just going for a little bit of a raid, you know, forcing it onto Viper. Uh, but uh, blacksmith now going to be coming in response for Viper. Zanmato does scout that out. Very, very curious openings here. Zanmato now going to be moving villagers over onto, onto stone. So going to be looking to drop down that second town center himself and Really, this was very, very strange. I don't think I've ever seen uh, an opening like that, especially in a Chinese mirror. So we'll have to pay attention uh, to that and see exactly how it goes. Here's Viper's response now coming out, respectively. He's also getting the plus one uh, attack. Now, uh, to be honest, I kind of like Zen Mato's position here because he's forced a response out of Viper. So Viper had a plan for what he wanted to do, right? And he is he's no longer able to do that plan because, you know, whether he wanted to... He, he was very clearly going for a second town center. You can see he's collected the 300 stone for it. And now he's gone and had to invest all that wood into into uh, archers as a response here. Viper now going to be looking to, to get in some trades on t onto his enemy. Now, one of the things to note with that as well uh, is that in addition to that, Viper is going for plus one. And typically in this matchup, you don't really want to be going for plus one range because you're going to be using palace guards a lot. Palace guards are very effective against those ranged units. So there's not a lot of sort of reason to be going for that plus one range unless, unless you're going to be playing an extended H2. If you're going for an extended H2, then definitely because of the, the true canoe uh, is definitely going to uh, take a lot of uh, assistance from that. But for the most part, it's quite rare to be going that. So nonetheless, Viper going to look to sort of chase away his enemy here. You see him almost cutting him off. He's going for a bit of the apex around the corner here, pretending he's a, a Formula One driver, Fernando Alonso. Uh, but uh, now going to be... <laughs> he's just picking off the wolf for him. He's helping him out a little bit there. Get, get rid of that body infantry for him. So we'll take a look now down towards Viper's base. Viper going to be dropping down uh, that town center any second, I suspect. Uh, and the question is, where is he going to go for it? I, I would imagine over on this hunt seems like a pretty decent spot. He's got another hunt up here towards the north. Uh, Viper is known to be a little bit more passive with his town centers. Uh, but I suspect in this matchup, yeah, it, it, it is just going to be... This is a great spot here. It combines Berry's hunt as well as the uh, the forest here. So really, really nice. And now look at this from Zanmato coming out. A little bit of a, an aggressive wall towards the middle. And I'm a big fan of this. I think this is great. Getting these aggressive walls out. And look at this. A second town center from Zanmato as well. So we'll be having a look towards his base. See what he gets. Blacksmith coming down for him, as was suspected. He did spot this out from... Uh, the Viper. And now we see the Barbican going down. Viper going to be going for that Dynasty. Eight minutes is the timing for Viper at this point. Dynasty now going to be coming up in response uh, from Zanmato as well. So both players knowing, you know, what each other is up to. Both players going to be responding. We see Zanmato responding with that Dynasty. We see him responding with a Blacksmith. So whether he looks to have plus one out here, I'd be very surprised. Uh, he should know that this only came out in response to Viper or to his own aggression and that he shouldn't really expect too much more to be coming out from Viper. So I would be very surprised to see him pick up these upgrades. But you know what? I, I have I have got things wrong plenty of times before and I suspect I will get plenty more things wrong as well. So now players obviously going to be looking towards that castle age. We'll take a look at Viper, how his macro is doing. A lot of villagers on food, but he's going to need more than that if he wants to get up to the castle age. He's got two Imperial officials out at the moment. Uh, both of those guys are going to be supervising. One on the mill, second one over on the lumber camp here. And notice how Viper is building his lumber camps in so close to each other. This is, this is exactly how you want to do it. Uh, making sure that... Uh, keep in mind, okay, if you if you manage to get your double broad axe upgrade... Always get the one that is being supervised because look at the time it takes to get this. It's only 30 seconds. The reason why is because it's being supervised. You reduce the time it takes to research those technologies because you're supervising. So super duper important. Do not get it in this one here because it's going to take the full minute 30. In this one, it will take only 30 seconds. So something to be very cognizant of. 
Now Viper going to be moving forward with his plus one. Not really going to be able to do much damage here. Probably just going to walk into his opponent's walls. We do know that he's got walls over here. There they are going up now. It's actually a little bit hard to see those walls on this map. Normally you can see walls through the fog of war. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit hard to see on this map. Uh, we'll see if Viper's able to spot these ones here. He can't even spot them down to the south here. Uh, a little bit more difficult to see. And now Viper has a, has a, a scout behind the enemy lines, and, and this is really, really helpful. He's got to be careful here. Viper, wake up. You don't want to lose this scout. You lose this scout, you're in a real bad spot. Oh, he's going to lose this scout. That's going to go down. Surely that's going to go down. There's no way that doesn't die. There's no way that doesn't die. There's no way that doesn't die. Oh my lord, how does he do it? How does he do it? How does he react in time? Uh, you guys know I'm just hyping that up. That was a, that was a pretty slow reaction, but, uh, you know, it's, it's Viper. <laughs> Archer's now going to be coming in from Zanmato down towards the back of Viper's base. He's putting down Triple Village here, and I really like this play for, from him. Villages are notoriously big. They are big, fat boys. Take up a lot of space. I think this is the equivalent of, like, four houses of space. Uh, and they do provide four houses worth of population. And now Viper going to be looking to get in some trades here against Zanmato. Probably going to just be training one or two extra archers, maybe to, to sort of just help out here. We can see Zanmato trying to pick off a villager and Viper going to be able to clean this up. So not going to have to worry about training those extra archers. And uh, Viper, very, very happy that he's going to be able to get rid of this annoyance. Towards the north, Viper does scout out the walls from his enemy. So knowing that he is planning for a rather uh, more, how, how do you say, a little bit more of a greedy game now. If I, I, if I was Viper and I spotted my enemy doing this, I tell you what, I, I would have one plan in mind. And that is three town center double dynasty, baby. That is what I'd be doing. Archer's now going to get picked off by the Barbican. First one. Can he get the second shot? I don't think he gets off the next shot because you can see the range. Oh, he did get the shot off. Did you guys see that? He actually got it off through the Fog of War. I don't know whether that's a bug or not, but the, the range for the Barbican is out here, but it doesn't have line of sight. Uh, now, I don't know exactly why that is. I don't know why the Barbican's range is that uh, big where it only has line of sight like that. You'd kind of think it would have more line of sight. You know what? Hey, developers, if you're listening to this, can we increase the Barbican line of sight? Just, you know, they can see through stealth forests like Outpost can. Let's give it the same line of sight as an Outpost. There you go. A nice little buff there for China. Speaking of buffs for China, though, Astronomical Clock Tower definitely doesn't need any help at the moment. A very strong landmark, and you can see the way that Viper is positioning this. This is super duper smart. Now, Viper, for the most part, has you know, kept the majority of his uh, buildings around this Imperial Academy, really thinking about the placement. And typically you do see players going for that uh, that building in the uh, area of effect of the Imperial Academy. But Viper saying, you know what? It's going up here. It's going right to the north. This is this is dangerous, but at the same time, it is, uh, it is it's very strong because both players actually hit, hitting up to the next age at the exact same time. We'll look to see if we can spot the uh, astronomical clock, clock, clock tower. Excuse me. There it is. And look at the... You can actually tell the, like, the difference between base building uh, from these players. So uh, Viper versus Zanmato. So you can see Zanmato has got one, two, three buildings in the effect. Compare that to Viper, who is uh, just, you know, doing very, very well with his Chinese base building. Now Zanmato going to be bringing out the Clockwork Springholds or Clock Tower Springholds. And this is... You, you would definitely think this is the right map or the right decision. But I'm telling you what, this is not the right decision in this matchup. So as China, what is your name of the game or what is your aim of the game? Fast Imperial is the secret that nobody knows about, okay? The main thing that you have to be thinking about when you are playing against China, how do you deal with their Springholds? And there's a super secret way. It's called Bombards, baby. So these Springholds have got 10 range, okay? His Springholds are going to remain at 10 range for the duration of the game, as long as he get, doesn't get to Imperial, okay? You can actually outrange his, his Springholds with your Bombards. Now, it's expensive to do. It's a lot of investment. But I promise you, if there, there is a way to do it. And I'd be curious to see if Viper isn't going to be looking to secure something potentially similar. Uh, we do spot that he's got nothing actually coming through at the moment uh, with his uh, astronomical clock tower. But look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We have got ourselves a little bit of a wall out happening. I am seeing this happening more and more and more. Enemies walling up the other side of the map. And that's exactly what Viper is going for here. Now, let's just talk a little bit about this. This is something I, I do want to talk about because it's very important on this map. You need to secure a foothold in the middle. What does that mean? That means that you need to find a side and you need to make it yours. So as an example, Viper is making a play for the top. How do we know that? Well, we know that because he's walled out the bottom or he's going to at least wall out the bottom. He doesn't want any fighting to happen down here. It's far away from his, his astronomical clock tower and it's going to be far away from his villages, which are going to be up here towards the north. And we know that because he's actually walled out his enemy up here towards the, the north. So what can we expect from him? We can expect at the very least that there is going to be one, probably two, probably even three castles that eventually come down here in the middle. 
And it's all because of these gold mines. Now, we talked about this earlier. He's got two gold mines. One, two. Now, these aren't going to be here forever. Now, of course, he could be market trading with his trading posts, but he, he knows that it's much more efficient at this stage of the game to just be going for his mining camp. And that's exactly what he is doing in the middle. Going to be building up some lances as well. And look at this. Viper's actually going for Fast Imperial. It is happening. The, and, and I'm so glad that we're actually seeing this because th this, in my genuine opinion, is 100% how you play this matchup. You, you just go Fast Imperial. Of course, you know, it's important that you make a few military units if you've got to defend yourself in the early game, like we saw Viper do, or towards the transitional period here, uh, you know, where Viper is... is uh, you know, making a couple of lances, but we can very clearly see, at least it looked like, maybe he's decided to uh, to use up some of his resources there. We'll have to take a look and see what has he got going on. Where are those? There, here are those stables. So he is making a couple more, a uh, couple more lances here. But obviously, you can see he's thinking about fast imperial at the moment. Uh, so the question is whether he actually goes for it, uh, whether he looks to. Uh, to put two and one together. But now look at this. Viper actually cancelling the wall. He had a wall that was coming up here. You can actually see it. It did start get building. But his enemy pushed out, made a breakthrough, and now this enemy is going to be coming in towards his base. So Viper's got a couple of decisions, or, or rather a, a couple of uh, questions. And, and the first one is, how does he respond to this? When he responds, uh, uh, the Fast Imperial is coming through. Viper is doing a Fast Imperial. This is going up at 16 minutes right now. I repeat, Viper is doing a Fast Imperial. And this is the correct counter. Uh, and the reason why is Bombards. Bombards are going to be very effectively a counter to this. We'll have to see if that's the play that Viper goes for here. Now, the one thing I'm going to check for Zen Mato is to see whether he has got Siege Engineering. He doesn't actually have Siege Engineering here. It's going to be very difficult for him to actually siege down the majority of Viper's buildings here. Sure, he's going to be able to take out the uh, the enemy, you know, uh, cavalry that he's got here, or even come in and potentially attack villagers. Does Viper have? He does have textiles. Imperial now coming up for him, being dropped down in the middle. You can see he's actually putting down an archery range here, so maybe thinking about Chokunu. He does have access to the Chokunu. He has plus one as well, if I remember correctly, so he might be in a de decent spot to actually go for that. He's got to be careful here. He needs to migrate villagers away. So the majority of his villagers are here on this wood. He needs to move them up towards this barrier patch uh, and get them away from these farms this wood line here begin to migrate them see if there's any wood that's available up towards the north that they can potentially look at there's really not unfortunately for viper but now towards the south he's actually picking up reinforcements here we'll take a look and see what upgrades we've got coming up we have uh oh this is zan i do apologize let's have a look at viper viper now with the bombard is going to be coming out and this is exactly it this is how you effectively counter these clock tower sprinkles one bombard plus 10 vils will kill all of these and this is the secret and I'm so glad that we are, are going to be watching Viper as he potentially does this. So the trick to this is the villagers. They can actually outheal all the damage of the Springlets on one condition. Uh, on the, the condition is that there is not enough to one-shot the Bombard. But the thing is, because of the Clock Tower, it's giving that extra 50% HP, 720 HP. You would need... How much damage do these guys do? They do 80 damage. Villagers are actually going to be coming forward now. And Viper doing a pretty decent job with the Villager pool. Plenty of these Springlets are still alive. 300 HP on all of these Bad boys, you can see the way he's microing a couple of scouts in the action as well. Lance is coming in on it as well, and Viper might not even need the bombards in this situation. I think he's going to be absolutely fine, as we can now see that even the lances are getting in on the action. Villagers actually just getting recalled out, and the four scouts going to be doing all the final damage that needs to be done. And Viper in a very decent position. He's managed to get up to the Imperial Age. He's got that first bombard out, and now this is where the train begins. So the question is, how does his opponent respond to that? And the answer is. The answer is resigning. He just doesn't respond. Viper, with the fast Imperial, comes out victorious. His enemy's got absolutely no response to it. Good game gets called. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you check out Viper's channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.